Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our information session for the nursing services request for qualifications or RFQ. Please type your name and business name in the chat. And this is for attendance purposes. Please note that the PowerPoint will be posted on the human services department HSD funding opportunity webpage within 5 business days. This session is being recorded and the recording and all questions and answers will be posted on the HSD funding opportunity webpage within 5 business days. We are delighted to have you join us this afternoon. My name is Mary Pat O'Leary. I'm a registered nurse and a senior planner with the human services department, the area agency on aging for Seattle King County. And I am happy to have my colleagues join me, Lori and Saba and Sarah. Lori. Hello everyone. My name is Lori Mina and I am a planner also um, with aging and disability services. And I'm one of the co-leads on this RFQ process this with Mary Pat. And hi everyone, I'm Saba. I'm an intern with Aging and Disability Services, and I'll be taking some notes throughout the meeting. Thank you. And Sarah? Hi, everybody. My name is Sarah Barkman, and I am one of the senior grants and contract specialists um, here at Aging and Disability Services, and I'm just helping support this RFQ process. Thank you so much. So we will hold questions until the end. Some of the questions that we've received are actually covered during our PowerPoint presentations, but we will have plenty of time at the end to answer questions. All final questions and answers will be posted to the HSD Funding Opportunity webpage. For our land acknowledgement, I would like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the first people of Seattle, the Duwamish people past and present, and honor with gratitude the land itself and the Duwamish tribe. It is important to note that this kind of acknowledgement is not a new practice developed by colonial institutions. Land acknowledgement is a traditional custom dating back centuries for many native communities and nations. For non-indigenous communities, land acknowledgement is a powerful way of showing respect and honoring the indigenous peoples of the land on which we work and live. Acknowledgement is a simple way of resisting the erasure of indigenous histories and working towards honoring and inviting the truth. So our session agenda is we will do an introduction, then we will cover a timeline, discuss background and requirements, submission instructions, the review and rating process, some important tips for your application, talk about the appeal process, and also answer any questions that you might have. So an introduction is this nursing services request for qualifications or RFQ is an open and competitive funding process. And we will award up to $165,755 to agencies or one or more agencies. And this funding is available through our federal and state Title 19 funding. The funding awards will be made for the period between October 1st 2022 through December 31st, 2023. The timeline, as you can see on the slide deck, the last day to submit the RFQ questions is Wednesday, July 27th. The application deadline is Thursday, August 11th, 2022 at 12 noon. The review and rating process is between August 12th and the 22nd. The award announcement is on Friday, September 9th. Any appeals will be processed between September 15th and the 21st, and the contract start date will be October 1st. The highlights of nursing services 
is primarily that nurses provide clinical medical nursing expertise, input and consultation to assigned aging and disability services and contracted agencies case managers. The scope of the work for the nursing service individual or agency would be completing home visits, utilizing comprehensive nursing assessment skills, and reviewing and contributing to an electronic comprehensive assessment. Things also included will be to provide training and education to clients, formal as well as informal caregivers and family members. It's important to note that this is not a direct hands-on type of skilled nursing service. However, nurses will perform comprehensive skin assessments and observations during the home visit. Who can apply? Sole proprietors, limited liability companies, partnerships, public corporations, a federally qualified, recognized, or Washington state recognized Indian tribe, and a 501c3. What does this RFQ fund? It funds nursing services that are performed in a client's home or through home visits, including phone calls, emails, fax contacts. Services are recorded and billed in 15 minute increments. We determine that a home visit is defined as a visit to a client's place of residence. And this is to perform a nursing service activity. This includes travel time, any time that is needed for documentation and time related to follow up with collateral contacts related to the visit. A follow up visit is defined as a second or subsequent visit to a client's place of residence to perform the nursing services activity. And this will require the approval of the area agency on agent case manager prior to the visit. Interpretation, excuse me, interpretation and translation services are defined as using the city of Seattle or King County approved agencies or sole proprietors for interpreter services. And this is for the purpose of providing in-home language interpretation during a home visit or translating services specifically for nursing services. Non-home visits or contacts are nursing service activities that are performed on behalf of a client, but they're not associated with a visit to the client's place of residence. These types of activities include care conferences, assessment reviews, and care coordination, for example. So what is the program criteria? This can be found on page four of the application. Clients must be receiving in-home Medicaid case management services, either from a human services department area agency on aging, aging and disability services case manager, or Asian counseling and referral service, Chinese information and service center, lifelong or neighborhood house. Aging and disability services, as well as these other entities all have case managers. The client's assessment results in a referral for nursing services, and it is the case managers who refer clients to the nursing services provider when a nurse consultant is not available. Who are our priority populations? This can be found on page four and five in the application. So. It is any adult 15, excuse me, any adult with disability 18 years of age and older or older adults who are enrolled in the community options program entry system known as COPES and or somebody on community first choice or Medicaid personal care or new freedom programs and they receive services from the Seattle King County Area Agency on Aging. The focus populations are Asian, Black, African American, and Native Hawaiian, other Pacific Islanders. The performance measures, and this can be found on page five in the application. 
and this will be quantity, the number of home visits completed by the registered nurse consultant, the number of phone calls completed by the registered nurse consultant, and the number of referrals received and confirmed within two business days. We also measure quality, and this is the percentage of clients receiving an updated plan of care and also impact the percentage of clients served who report improved health. What are the key staff and staffing levels? This can be found on page five. The contractor shall provide the capacity of up to one full-time equivalent, one FTE registered nurse who meets the following qualifications. So the person needs to have a current Washington State registered nurse license and be in good standing. A bachelor's degree from an accredited school of nursing is preferred. A minimum of two years professional nursing experience providing nursing assessments for older adults or adults with disabilities. The nurse should be able to pass a criminal background check, have a valid Washington State driver's license, have the ability to make on-site home visits to clients throughout the King County area, have experience working with clients who are low income, have limited English speaking skills, um, or receive Medicaid services, have the capacity to receive and respond to nursing services referrals within two business days, and utilize professional nursing judgment. And now I'll turn it over to Lori. Thank you, Mary Pat. Okay, we are going to go through the rating criteria. This is a competitive process. Applications will be reviewed and evaluated by a rating panel on criteria, which I will cover in the next five slides. Applications will be scored according to the points displayed on this slide. The panel members consist of community members who are nursing subject matter experts or have experience working with low income, older adults and adults with disabilities. There are five areas and the total points possible are 100 points. These five pages are the questions for the narrative response of the application. The first section is a project description. This section is worth 25 points, so that's a quarter of the 100 points possible. We need you to explain to us in detail how your organization will provide nursing services to our clients who are low income and from various backgrounds. Tell us your understanding of working with older adults and persons with disabilities based on where they live, their age, ethnicity, et cetera. Describe what their strengths, needs, or concerns are. The second section is looking at partnerships and collaborations, and it is worth 10 points. Describe your experience working with other agencies, such as Department of Social and Human Services, or DSHS, hospitals, clinics, etc. How will you collaborate with them to del deliver services to the client? How will the client benefit from this coordination? And also tell us what your role and responsibility will be as a nurse consultant and the roles and responsibilities of the various partners you will work with. The next section is promotes community centered programming and it's worth 10 points. And here we would like you to describe the priority populations and community that Mary Pat spoke to in the previous slides, as well as the racial inequities or health inequities that the program will address and reduce. We want to know how um, the priority pop population will be impacted while participating in your nursing services program. This section is worth the most at 40 points, capacity and experience. 
It's important that you focus on being clear and concise. We'd like you to demonstrate your experience that shows at least two years of nursing services. And we would like you to talk about uh, a realistic timeline if you're not already providing this type of service. And lastly, please describe your experience working with other uh, other clients from various populations and different languages. This application needs to be clear and needs to be clear how leadership will be a support for nursing services, whether you're a sole proprietor or you rely on management. Also describe how you will maintain quality nursing staff to ensure your agency can accept nursing referrals within two business days. Next, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, the budget forms, and I will uh, pass it over to Sarah. Thank you so much, Lori. I appreciate it. Okay, so the budget forms, as you know, as you probably have seen, contain first the uh, proposed program budget. So that's what we're looking at here. It's kind of a little snapshot. Um, what we're looking at here is you've got, is basically what funding are you requesting from us as part of this process? So will you be requesting a, the full amount, part of the amount, et cetera, to fund, um, to fund your uh, part in delivering these services. And so the first section there is personnel services, which we'll get into a little bit more detail in a minute here. Um, but something to note, as you can see, there, uh, it's separated into just some simple, some simple categories like office supplies, like for example, printing, postage, post-its, you know, pens, the, the usual kind of thing for office. Um, operating supplies, that would include all of your computer and technology um, expenses, things like that. Um, rent, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. Um, contractual employment or other professional services, that tends to be if you subcontract out. So I don't know that that would apply to this specific, but you make your own judgment call and when, when you're looking through your budget. Um, travel, mileage, parking, et cetera. Um, insurance would be any insurance you need to cover, as far as particularly in this case, probably liability insurance. Um, and then utilities. That's exactly what it sounds like, internet, phone, electric, et cetera. Um, and then something in addition to that that we um, could be part of your program budget but does not have to be is what we would call indirect or administrative costs. And I can go into that a little more in depth. I think it's in the next slide. Thank you, Lori, or whoever's. <laughs> um, so indirect costs, the really simple way of explaining what this is it is particularly if you're a sole proprietor, maybe you haven't really utilized this category before. It's just an overhead administrative cost. So there's three options you have when you're looking at a budget and whether or not you want. So the first option is you don't have to use indirect. You don't have to have indirect costs as a category in your budget at all. You can directly bill every, you can do only direct billing if you want to. You do not have to like, take apart a percentage of costs for administrative rate. Um, so, it, for example, our previous contractor for this service only did direct billing. They didn't factor in indirect costs. Um, the other option is if you, you, your company may or may not have, might have a federally approved rate. If you do, you would just use that percentage um, that you've been approved for. Or if you would like to um, utilize indirect costs or want to have that as part of your budget category, if you don't already have a federally approved rate, it would be just a standard 10% for, and that's true for all of our human services department contracts. So, and you can see here it's listed kind of what it would include, like general administration, operation and maintenance, et cetera. But you can see also in the previous part of the budget, you can also bill operating, operating supplies and stuff in a separate area. So again, you can bill everything as direct cost. You do not have to utilize this category. And I think next is personnel detail. Okay, so proposed personnel detail. So this is where you really simply put in who is going to be working on this specific project. What will their hourly rate be? What will and you know what 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 are the salaries and wages for the whoever is you know whatever staff you list here, 
and then also any of the benefits that they might receive. So you'd, you'd break out health, dental, unemployment, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then the, the total of the personnel costs that are in this detailed um, budget need to match up with the, with the other page because you'll enter in that same information, the totals here in that same. Actually, if you could go back two slides um, and I can show. Yeah, right at the top of the program budget, you'll see personnel services and you'll see salary and then fringe benefits. And you'll want to make sure that those add up together. So anything that you've listed out in personnel detail, all of those totals will go up at the top of your total proposed program budget. So just, just as a, just wanted to make sure I pointed that out. One other thing to really think about as well is that this first, um, this first contract will cover 15 months. And so when you're looking at the budget, it'll need to be a 15 month budget. So normally it would be, a, it would be 12 month the annual budget, but you'll want to think about um, what the cost will be for 15 months versus just 12. So I wanted to make sure to stress that because that's sort of an unusual time frame. <laughs> And I, I think that's all I had on that. Yeah, and I think over to you guys. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, so um, that completes our discussion about the application. So now I wanna talk about the com completed application. So the proposal must include an application cover sheet with a physical signature. Next would be the narrative response. And that's the sections that I, uh, the five questions that I uh, spoke about. And there is a maximum number of five pages that we will accept. The next section is the proposed program budget and proposed personnel detail budget forms that Sarah just shared. And then a startup timeline. Some of you may be nurse delegators contracted with DSHS or part of a home health agency. This is a new project area providing nurse consultant services and is considered a new body of work. We'll want to see a realistic startup timeline that fits the plan contract start date of October 1st, 2022. Your application must be received no later than 12 noon on Thursday, August 11th. We recommend not waiting until the last few minutes to submit your email, to submit or email your RFQ to us so that you have time to fix any potential technical glitches with the internet or the email system, either on your end or our end. You can submit the application either by an online portal or by email. You will receive a confirmation that HSD re received your submission. There are no physical copies for this RQ allowed. Here is a snapshot of what the RFP RFQ submission portal looks like. Check to make sure that you choose ADS nursing services RFQ as the human services department is running other funding opportunities at the same time. Review and reading summary. Again, we cannot stress the importance of the, the deadline of 12 noon on August 11th, 2022. The rating committee will review the completed applications. Uh, the, the rating panel may request for interviews if they have some clarifying questions that they would like answered from the application. There will be a fiscal review and then the final recommendations will be made to the HSD director by the rating panel. We will then have an agency and public announcement once a selection has been made. Other documents. If funding is awarded, the human services department will request copies of financial and insurance documents. And agencies will have four business days from the date of written request to provide these documents. 
and you can find the financial and ins insurance documentations required on page 13 of the RFQ application. Now I'm going to go over some tips. So the first one is follow the required format. For example, you can start with a blank word document. After you put the title of the RQ, you'll type your response, your responses to the narrative section. We ask that you use 11 point font, single spacing with one inch margins. Remember your application must not exceed five pages. Look at the rating criteria. Be specific. More than more sections have one. More sections have more than one question. Submit an accurate budget. Double check your numbers. Propose plans for addressing services that are not in place. Start early and allow time for submission process. And have someone else read or review your application. And lastly, look at the rating. Uh, criteria that I talked about, as well as the application submission checklist. Appeal process. Applicants have the right to protest, protest, or appeal certain decisions in the award process. There are only two grounds for appeals. First, for a violation of policies outlined in the HSD or Human Services Department Funding Process Manual, or for a violation of policies or failure to adhere to the guidelines or published criteria established in the RFQ. In order for your appeal to be successful, you would have to document and demonstrate that somehow there was a violation of policies or violation of us adhering to the guidelines or published criteria. The appeal process has its own deadline. Appeals must be received within four business days from the date of the written award or denial. The human services director will make her decision within four business dates of the receipt of the appeal, and that decision will be final. Okay, Mary Pat. Thank you, Lori. So questions and answers will be posted to the HSD funding opportunity webpage, and there is a link on the PowerPoint. Um, additional questions can continue to be sent to me uh, no later than noon on August 27th, which is this Wednesday. If you have questions, issues, concerns about the online submission system, please contact Sola Plumacher and her email is on the slide as well. And for those of you that um, are not able to see it, I will read it out to you. It's S is in Sam O L A dot P L U M is in Mary A C H E R at Seattle dot gov. So I'm going to go ahead and review some of the questions that we received, all of the questions that we get, we will post on our web page. These are questions that may have been covered, but I will do some highlights here. For question one, can you tell me what this contract involves and as an RN, what I would be doing? And the question was about the pay rate. So please see B service model program, page five, and that talks about that nursing services provides clinical medical expertise input in consultation to the assigned area agency on aging case manager. The nurse completes home visits, telephone calls, coordinates with a multitude of community providers, including medical providers, nurses, therapists, pharmacists, other healthcare providers, family members, informal and formal caregivers. The most recent reimbursement rates were as follows, and these are negotiable. So the home visit and follow up visit were at $18 for 15 minute increment or $72 an hour. The non home visit contact was $12 for every 15 minutes or $48 an hour and interpreter services are reimbursed at their actual cost. 
Sarah, question three. Yes, let me hit that mute button there. Um, so the first, the question three was um, asking that I noticed the budget is up to 165,755. Would this budget be split between two agencies? Also in another section of the application, page four, top of the page, I noticed that the services are recorded and billed in 15 minute increments. Can you explain how this works? Very good question. So if two agencies are awarded contracts from the from this process, then yes, the budget would probably likely be split between both. Um, I can say that our previous contractor for these services did have the full amount because they provided two nurses to staff these services. So it'll just depend on what it is you're requesting, what, what it is you're putting into your application, how many um, RNs you can put towards these services. The next part of the answer is that the nurse, so the nurse consultant is required to track their time by 15 minute increments, or you can do by hour, you know, by hour and multiply by four. <laughs> um, and it, but basically any work that's done on the behalf of the client. So the nurse consultant will then bill, um, bill the human services department for the total number of hours worked by month by submitting a report showing client names and hours work. And so, and we would, we supply that report for you as well to, to, to keep track of. Something to note that I think can be confusing or maybe feels a little disconnected is that we are, we're, we are asking for a budget and how much funding you are, you are asking for out of this process. At the same time, this is considered a unit cost reimbursement um, project. And so that means you will bill for and we will reimburse you for any direct hours you provide um, and direct services you provide. So we don't necessarily, um, we don't necessarily hand over the full amount of funding that you have requested, but it's really the budget is a way of looking at um, how will you utilize the funds if you were to, that we, we reimburse at the actual rate that you, of services you provide per hour. Thank you, Sarah. Question four is how many clients will be served in total? How many staff is appropriate to have on this specific assignment? On page five under section F, it stated the contractor shall provide the capacity of up to one full-time equivalent FTERN. What is considered full-time? First, let me say thank you for the question. Uh, the number of clients served will vary. In the section A of the request for qualification, it outlines that this contracted service is for when or if nursing vacancies, extended leaves, and workload overflow occur. The average amount of referrals when we did need the service was 14, though this can vary. A full-time equivalent person would be 40 hours a week. Question five, Sarah. Yes, thank you. Um, so in section G number four, uh, it mentioned applicant must provide for a separate accounting of funds from different sources and financial internal controls. Can you elaborate on this question? Is this referring to having a, an account that is separate from a business account that is already established? So the answer to that is, um, so that's referring to a, having a business account as well as an accounting system to be able to produce accurate and reliable financial records. The business account, um, the business account should be separate from a personal account and the accounting system should allow for the tracking of expenses, receipts, services, and revenue. Thank you, Sarah. Question six, Lori. Thank you. On the application, page three, under section B, partnerships and collaboration. Number one mentions, describe how the program will collaborate with other agencies slash programs to deliver services. Is this in regards to us needing to collaborate with other agencies? Is this a requirement? In this section under number one, letter A mentioned, what are the benefits of this effort for program participants? Is this in regards to the clients or patients? Also, what does this question mean in the same section? Please identify any areas that will consult, consolidate the provision of service, services across agencies. Can you please explain this question? Section B, explain the roles and responsibilities of the various partners. 
Do we need to partner with another agency? <coughs> Excuse me. In working side by side with the case manager and client, the nurse consultant may refer the client for services that aren't already in place. We would like you to describe your experience working or coordinating, coordinating with other entities. We are not requiring a formal partnership, but want to know how your agency or you as an individual has referred clients to needed services and supports. This means describing how your agency providing nursing services benefits of program participate participants slash clients slash patients. Identifying any areas that consolidate the provision of services across agencies mean any collaboration that your agency does to reduce duplicate duplication of services, including home health nursing, wound care clinics, or other services. Thank you, Lori. And question seven, Sarah. Uh, yeah, the section E of the application on page five says number two, or page page five number two says what costs and expenses are estimated uh, slash needed to be covered prior to receiving the grant. So the entity, so anyone requesting funding must document that they have fiscal solvency to cover costs for nursing services prior to receiving reimbursement. Thank you, Sarah. And question eight is. Nursing services describe the program model, what services and how to deliver services. And that again is an application section B, the service uh, program model. And that outlines clearly that the nurse services individual would um, do home visits, telephone follow up coordinating with community partners. Question nine, how will the fund be used? Sarah. Um, yeah, so um, anyone requesting the funding need to, needs to describe how they will utilize the funding to perform the nursing services. So it's really specific to how will you use the funding? So will it go to salaries and wait, you know, salaries and wages, um, et cetera, et cetera. It's just, you're just really, as you complete that budget, <clears throat> you're really just detailing out where, where you will um, put the funding, like how you will utilize the funds you receive for this specific project. Thank you, Sarah. Question 10 is program budget the same as how the funds to be used? And that answer is yes. Question 11, 11, what does it mean by personal budget? I believe that might mean personnel budget, and that would include all positions, salaries, wages, and benefits cost for this project. Question 12, what is the amount of nurses required to be stationed? And I encourage you to see F page five, Key personnel and staffing level, the contracted entity shall provide up to 1.0 FTE and the qualifications are listed in the RFQ as well. And this person would need to uh, reside um, in Washington state, have a Washington state license and be able to travel throughout King County. Question 13, what are the required hours and shifts for each nurse? I would refer you to section A, the overview of investment area. The RFQ is for contracted nursing services to be utilized when nursing vacancies, extended leaves, and workload overflow occur. The nurse is expected to be available during regular business hours, Monday through Friday. There is no specific hour or shift per the nursing referral. And question 14, Sarah. Uh, yeah, this question is about mileage. Um, is mileage reimbursed and what is the minimum and maximum time if they are required to travel and are they reimbursed for expenses? So the service area, as we mentioned, is throughout all of King County. So you really need to think east side, north and south end, et cetera. Um, and in the past, mileage was wrapped into the reimbursement rate of, of the $72 an hour. Mileage reimbursement outside of that rate is negotiable. Uh, and there is not a minimum or maximum time frame for reimbursement. I mean, it just takes you whatever time it takes you to travel. So um, there isn't, there is not a, a limit on that. Thank you, Sarah. Do we have questions in the chat? Yes, sorry, I was manning the chat. Um, oh, that's fine. Let me 
<laughs> so the first question was, are phone or video interpreters allowed? And I, I mean, the short answer is yes. I also, um, I think the really common, we also pr provide a, um, a list of, of improved interpreters and services as well um, for our providers. And then the other question was, will this presentation be recorded to be viewed later? And I said, yes, this is being recorded and will be posted with all of the questions and answers. Can you remind us, um, Mary Pat, where exactly that will be posted or Lori? For the question, the um, this recording? The vi this recording, yeah. Yes, it will be posted on the Human Services um, Oppor Funding Opportunities webpage, the same page where you find the RFQ application. You'll see in the right hand column, there are a number of documents. For example, this application is available in PDF. The application is available in uh, a Word document. Um, the budget forms, which Sarah talked about, are available in Excel. Format and then so you will see um, in the next few days um, this recording as well as the copy of questions and answers. Thank you. And then there is another um, question for the typed responses: Is single or double space required? Single space is required. And another one just popped in. Uh, what is program model? We all provide nursing assessment and teaching to caregiver family. So nursing services within the area agency on aging for those clients that are Medicaid clients and served by case managers by the area agency on aging, we are required to perform specific nursing functions under funding from Title 19 state and federal dollars. And these services are specific to long-term care supports clients, aging, um, ages 18 years of age and older. The nurse consultant works with a case manager um, within the area agency on aging or a contracted agency. And the case manager does the assessment and says, this individual is very complex. I'd like your input on the plan of care regarding uh, multiple medical diagnoses, frequent infections, and the nurse responds to the referral from the case manager. There is something specific within the long-term care services and supports that the nurse consultant responds to what they call skin observation protocol. When a client is at high risk for skin breakdown, or has a current pressure injury, the case manager refers to the nurse and the nurse follows a specific protocol to ensure that the client's skin is being checked on a regular basis, all the pressure points are examined, and that if there is a treatment in place that it's meeting the client's needs, and if there needs to be a change to the plan of care, that nurse provides input and explanation to the case manager and updates the plan of care. Okay, and then another question has just popped in, or a couple, so hold, bear with me. Um, it just says, "I want to. I just want to clarify. We have to pay. We have to pay for all of the costs needed to run the business up front, and we will be reimbursed. When is the reimbursement? Do you guys want me to handle that one? Excuse so that's that's the tricky part. Is <laughs> That's, that's what's so interesting about this particular thing. So um, the contract that, so when you're requesting funds, you're saying, hey, here's how much I would need to, to um, provide this service. But we reimburse you per hour, like per actual service provided. So we don't provide, like, let's say you, let's say, for example, you requested 80 grand of this funding to, for a single RN to provide this service. And the 80 grand doesn't just get handed over. Slowly over time, up to up to $80,000, we reimburse you for the actual hours you provide. So let's say you receive a few, a few referrals per week 
And however much time you spent on those specific referrals, you're reimbursed at that whatever rate we negotiated out. So for example, the previous rate was $72 an hour. So you will receive exactly whatever reimbursement for the exact hours you provide. I hope that answers the question. Please do ping us if, if that's not enough. Um, there is also another question is how do we know what roles and responsibilities of other business partners when we have not known their jobs? So one of the things that the case manager does is find out who's all involved with the client's plan of care. So the client might be involved with the wound clinic. Maybe they're involved with a home health agency. Maybe they are involved with the nurse delegator. So essentially what this is, it's not to duplicate any other nursing that's out there. It is to provide a specific prescriptive nursing intervention under the umbrella of the area agency on aging and state mandates and directives. One of the things that the nurse service entity would do is if nursing services is involved and the person's also, person is also getting nurse delegation, they would reach out to the nurse delegator and find out what are the specific delegated tasks. If there is home health nurse going in after a discharge from a hospital, the nursing service entity would follow up with the home health agency and say, what are you doing? Home health may be going out to do a catheter uh, insertion. But that doesn't mean that the home health nurse is checking all the pressure points if the client is at risk for skin breakdown. So there are specific entities that do different things within nursing services, but it would be the nursing services entity that would follow up with any other nurses that are involved with the care and see who is doing what for the client. Thank you, Mary Pat. There's another question that popped up. Um, can cost of business exceed budget planned when there are more clients we ended up getting at the end? I can cover that one as well. So, well, one, I can tell you that it's never happened. <laughs> so, so I, it, uh, it's very unlikely that that will occur. But I also can say that um, because it would be, it's somebody like my role is as a grants and contract specialist or whoever it is that will manage the con, you know, the contract. Um, we do track budget pretty pretty closely on a month by month basis with the invoicing. Um, and if if that were to become an issue, we would certainly problem solve that prior to that being a concern. So um, I guess I don't have a an exact yes or no answer for you, but we would mitigate that issue very early in the game versus you know at the end of the year or something. And it it has not in my experience ever occurred. So that I can tell you as well. So it might not be really an issue to worry about. Um, there's a, a couple more questions. Hold on. So how many clients are we expected to serve? There, I can also field that one if you guys. Okay. Please, go ahead, um, yeah. <laughs> so there, there is not a, like a ceiling as far as like, or uh, necessarily as on client referrals. Um, I would say, can you remind me, Mary Pat, what the average 14. rate of referral is? So the average rate of referral per month is about 14. What I can tell, and that's for any nurse consultant that um, either is an inter internally um, working at ADS um, or a subcontracted like these services would be. I can say that varies greatly. So. It could be three one month and more the next. Um, sometimes there's an average of seven to eight. So it, it really does fluctuate, um, but there's not necessarily a ceiling on clients. Like, oh, if you don't serve X amount of clients per month, there's an issue. That's not a, that's not a concern. Um, next question is, are we the ones who will send a referral to other business partners and follow up with them? Thank you for the question. Again, nursing services is in consultation and in concert with the case manager. 
So the nurse consultant would talk with the case manager and say, I believe this client would benefit from a referral to X entity, maybe an evidence based fall prevention program, maybe uh, some follow up with mental health. Should I make a referral or will you make the referral? It's not that you yourself as the nurse consultant would refer to an entity outside of the case manager. It's a collaborative process. Thank you. I'm going to give it just a couple minutes in case folks either have, in case we didn't answer your question to, to satisfaction or if there are more questions. I'm going to just give it a few moments if folks want to put anything more in the chat. Okay, next question is, what is the timeline to finish assessment? Do, do you want to take that, Mary Pat, or do you want me to? Sir, feel free to go ahead. Okay, so this is also not a very clear cut. Um, so there, the state of Washington, so also DSHS have very clear cut uh, timeframes on when um, and how each referral or nursing assessment is to be completed. And the answer is it depends. So if there is a client with a current um, skin breakdown, current issue, um, full blown concern that nobody, no other professional is seeing, it would be a shorter time frame. There are longer time frames for, um, for client or pay clients or patients in different circumstances or with different skin concerns because it usually is um, the the skin issue the skin issues that are being referred out. So um, I mean we do want you to be able to, anybody who contracts for the service to be able to respond to a referral, not necessarily complete the assessment, but respond to the referral within two business days. But there are varied timelines and we would go over that that's um, as we were looking to onboard a new provider. So that kind of a, that kind of information we'll share in more depth um, after we get past this RFQ process. And answer your question. I'm hoping we are answering these questions well. I do not see any more popping up. Oh, so it says, so there is no clear cut timeline. There are clear cut timelines, but it depends on what the situation with the patient is. So the timelines are specific to, do they have a current skin issue that no professional is seeing? Do they have a current skin issue, but a professional is seeing them? Do they have a current skin issue, or do they not have a current skin issue, but are they a high risk for breakdown? So there's different levels of patient need. And so those are spelled out in um, I, the nursing services chapter in the long-term care manual that also creates. And so those, they're all very spelled out and they are, they are written down. Um, it's just that I couldn't, it, it, I guess the answer is it depends. There are clear cut timelines, but it depends on which category that patient necessarily falls into as how quickly the turnaround and what, what level of intervention is required by the nurse consult. I hope that answers. Thank you, Sarah. And, and as Sarah said, there in chapter 24 of the long term care manual from the state of Washington, aging and long term care services and supports. It clearly outlines the timeline response for nursing services. And there is a requirement to respond within 24 hours of receiving a referral. At that point, the nurse needs to arrange to do a home visit, perhaps, if it's a skin observation protocol, needs to work to get a third party present at the home visit, may need to then the next day follow up with the wound clinic if they're involved, primary care provider. So there's the initial response to the referral and starting the work, but the length of time to actually complete the complete referral may is really going to be dependent upon the client and the circumstances. Thank you for that, Mary Pat. <laughs> oh, and it says, are there any orientation services for this? Um, and I think perhaps you mean orientation for the, the, the providers that would come on. Um, we do provide technical assistance and 
onboarding for any new providers. And so we would be going over a lot of this information during, in, during that onboarding, um, how to fill out invoices, what are the rules, what is the long-term care chapter that we just talked about, what are all of the timeframes, what are the expectations. Um, all of that will be all of that will be discussed and we'll be providing assistance as folks get ramped up to provide the service. So I guess you could say yes, there is a bit of an orientation. Um, it says any regular meetings. Um, it as far as regular meetings, there aren't any necessarily required regular meetings, but any time that we onboard a new provider, um, we do usually have frequent meetings up front to like kind of make sure because there's just there's more questions up front, right? So as as we go along, probably not so often. But we would certainly want to provide technical assistance and we could work with whatever provider to figure out what meetings or orientation or onboarding or support is needed as we're getting things going. Um, and then another question is, do you guys have an electronic medical record for us to submit docu or documents? Do you want to, I, I can take that one too, or? Okay, I'll take it. Okay, so we don't have, we don't have like an electronic medical record like they would at a, um, like maybe a home health agency or like a hospital or something like that. We do have, um, currently we are getting, do you guys have a, so you would be submitting, right now, how they do it is we submit documentations through secure email. And so they're submitting, attaching and submitting emails, like here's the follow up, here's the, you know, because there's not too much documentation to provide, um, but that's how it's being done right now. And do we need a consent from the client? So my, I believe my understanding is that the consent is, the consent is given with for case management services and these nurse consult services are part of that. And so you don't specifically need to, my understanding, and please correct me, Mary Pat or Lori, my understanding is you don't necessarily need to have a release of information or a consent for the clients to speak with you specifically. Am I, am right. I, do I have that correct? Okay, that thank you. Um, so that that is held by the case manager and on the consent form that they have with their clients, it includes nurse consult services. So you're covered there. I'm gonna give it just a moment because things are, oh, here we go. To get reimbursed is a receipt needed or bank balance. So no, so reimburse, so for invoicing, you would submit, so we, we provide you a template for a report on how you can keep track of which clients you saw and how many hours you provided per month. Um, you send that back to us with your invoice that we, again, we will provide a template for the invoicing as well. And you just say, here's how much I provided for these clients, um, et cetera, and we reimburse you for those hours. For the interpreter services, likely it is we would we would want some proof of receipt that you utilize X amount of interpreter services for X for a particular client, but that's getting into a little nitty gritty, I think. But um, so yeah, I guess a receipt would be needed for that. If we do end up doing mileage out, if there if you do look to negotiate for mileage outside of the of the regular hourly rate, then we would probably need to look at what documentation we would want for that. We haven't traditionally done that in the past. It does not mean it can't happen in the future, but we haven't yet worked out what documentation we would require for that. Um, so more to come. This is all part of the negotiation and the process. So I may not have the exact answer now, but it's a conversation certainly to have. Um, it says, so itemized billing for each expense. I, I believe, <laughs> Well, so you, well, you, you would be, you would be tracking the hours you're providing um, and also perhaps interpreter services that you're utilizing because we do pay those out at the direct rate that you, direct cost that you had to incur to provide those. Um, so at the itemized billing, it really is just how many home visits, how many non-home visits, and, and, and how much interpreter services. That's currently what our invoice has. And so you'd really just be going by the amount of hours you provided of each. And then the interpreter service, you would say, oh, I, here's the receipt. I had to utilize 
you know, the language line interpreter for this client and for this and for this amount of cost. And we would just reimburse that as a direct cost, or at least that's how it currently works. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Can client's family be interpreter? You know, uh, Mary Pat or Lori, do you know if we use utilize in the past? That's, we usually tend not to prefer that, um, just in case. We would prefer for there to be an external interpreter. If there is, for some reason, a language that is very difficult, some A languages I know are very difficult to find interpreters, or there are issues getting scheduled, and um, sometimes I know folks do informally sometimes use family, but the preference would be that you use um, one of the interpreters that are city approved for each client that requires one. Even if even if the family member says, "Oh, oh, I can do it," it just often medical language. There's a little. It's a little bit more. Could sometimes be more difficult, and sometimes. And we want to make sure that there's a neutral party providing um, providing that service for the for the patient or the client. I'm looking to see if there's, give it a moment for any more questions. You guys have great questions. Thank you for, for all the typing. We have plenty of time, so uh, we don't want to rush <laughs> it. If you have more questions, um, bring them on. Well, and, and truthfully, if there's a question you had earlier and maybe we did not answer it to your satisfaction or need, please do just ping us again. <laughs> And if you think of any more questions, just wanted to remind you that um, you can get those to Mary Pat um, by noon on Wednesday, the 27th, I believe. Yes, July 27th. That is true. That is the first yes, if you, deadline. Yes, if you think of something later, as I often do, <laughs> As soon as I, I'm, I walk out of a meeting, I remember, uh, I think of great questions afterwards. So don't hesitate to send those in and we'll add them to the current um, list of questions and answers that we're already compiling um, and that you saw a little bit of today. And the next comment was just thank you. So thank, no, thank you for attending. We're so glad to see folks um, and happy to have been able to answer some questions. And I also want to thank you on behalf of Aging and Disability Services in this process. It has certainly been, um, have some interesting hills and valleys in the process and we appreciate your patience. We are delighted, truly delighted and very grateful that you took the time today to participate in this information session. Um, I could not do this work without the incredible help of Saba and Lori and Sarah. So I want to thank them as well. Uh, we encourage you to, uh, to ask questions and we are so grateful that you took the time and we're just really looking forward to getting some great applications. So thank you, Mary Pat, for leading our group here today. Yes, thank you. Well, thank I you think I don't have any more. Oh, I was just going to say I don't have any more questions. Okay. <laughs> thank, you, the chat, Sarah, think. thank you for monitoring the chat. Thank you, Saba, for your your great support here. All right. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and end the meeting. If we don't have any more questions. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.